Good morning from the countryside of Moldova. I've rented a car, we're going to go explore, and the first thing I've seen about an hour outside of the city is some old retired men fishing on frozen ice. Let's go see if we can join them. Здравствуйте. Как тебя зовут? Ваня. Ваня. Меня зовут Кейтлин. Катя. Откуда вы? Из Америка. А, нет. А. От погоды давление, наверное. Видите, зима и вот такие большие. Да, да. Еще какая-то работа. Спасибо большое. Политра. Политра. Горячего. I didn't do it right. Das <laughs> Badania, Poka. Well, speaking to the pensioners just now, they said they come out every day in the winter, they fish for carp and then they take it home and they eat it. And in the summers, they fish for these mussels. They have to go to the bottom of the floor and try to get them. During World War II, there was a famine here. It killed thousands of people and they would find these and eat them. That's all they could subsist on for weeks at a time. Super interesting. You can find wells all over Moldova. For a very, very long time, most of the population did not have running water. Luckily now it is improving. The situation is a lot better and most of these wells are just covered and are inactive now. Behind me, you can see some wood gates. This is traditional on Moldovan farms to have wood gates with decorations or different symbolisms and colors in front of your home. Made a new friend. Poka, off on his own journey across the provinces of Moldova. You might be wondering where I'm off to on this provincial journey across Moldova. Well, let's see. Now we are in Orhevik, which has a monastery for Eastern Orthodox monks that is built into the caves under the mountaintop that we are in. Surrounding us in the valley, you can see mountaintops that have man-made holes in that climbers in the summer come up and climb to. The caves in this region have been used for centuries for people seeking refuge and protection from persecution, practicing their religion in the caves. This specific monastery was built in the 13th century by Orthodox monks. At one time, it housed over 13 monks and had church services. Now it only has one monk and it does offer church services on the weekends. Look at this crazy view. Can you imagine coming and praying here? It's absolutely gorgeous. You do have to cover your head if you're visiting as is required in Orthodox church, but look at this insane view. I highly recommend coming to Orhevik if you are in Moldova. All you have to do is give a small donation if you're wanting to enter the monastery and cover your head. Now let's continue on our journey through the provinces. Check out this carriage, pretty cool. Okay, just saw this on the side of the road. I want you guys to see. What you see behind me is an abandoned Soviet cultural club. They had these in 
every village or every large village rather. This was a place where people would come for community, for music classes. Often the libraries were housed in these. Just a general place for everyone to be together. And now look at it. The community is still just as big, but it's just gone to ruins. This building structure is very unique. There are single rooms built all off of the main building, which is very odd. Wow. So the inside of this room was like a theater. They would do plays and shows and everyone would sit here. Just look at the beautiful painting on the ceiling. Oh my goodness. And now it's just absolutely destroyed. How sad. Well guys, you never know what you'll find here in the provinces of Moldova. Another penis with eyes and a mouth. Moldovans love those. America. <laughs> 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 A carriage ride through the provinces of Moldova. Is this? Is this? Da? Oh! Oh! Спасибо большое. What you're seeing behind me is a whole bunch of farmland and this is Moldova. Almost all of its exports, or lack thereof, almost all of the GDP, everything, is made up of farmland, grapes, wines, many different kinds of products. Here, I am in Soroka. This is our final destination. And let's see why I brought you all the way to the north of Moldova to see it. Today, I am at Gypsy Hill. Right now, this is Gypsy Hill. It's famous all over Moldova because there's a giant Roma population here. They come, they build these extravagant homes, but none of them are finished. It's just a shell. Sometimes they live in one bedroom. Sometimes they don't live in any of the houses because when you finish a house, you have to pay taxes to the Moldovan government and they don't want to do that. The money for these houses usually comes from illicit activities and therefore the Roma cannot afford to finish them after they start because the drug money stops coming in. Behind me, you can see what is known as the White House of Gypsy Hill. I'm sure you can see why. The Roma population has a king here, the Roma King. And it's so official that even our ambassador in Moldova has had an official dinner with him. The Roma population, unfortunately, is subject to a lot of difficult things in life, uh, very poor economics. A lot of the kids, due to their culture, don't attend school, or if they do, they go to a very young age and stop. Girls are expected to get married to other boys at 13 or 14 years old, and therefore, as you can imagine, many people are economically disadvantaged. They build these houses from drug money and other revenues. They live in one bedroom that's not fit with electric or plumbing. A really difficult life for most of the people in this village. Very sad to see. There are lots of misconceptions about gypsies and the Roma. I uh, was hoping to prove those wrong. Unfortunately, this village is quite as bad as they say, but we have met plenty of polite people, very friendly. They do ask for money at the end of the conversation. So take that as you may. Shrasvice. 
Как тебя зовут? Настя. Настя. Меня зовут Кейтлен. Кейтлен. Из Америка. Вау. Okay, I've just been told by the Roma that I'm allowed to go see this house, that no one's living in it right now. So let's take a look. You can see exactly what I've been talking about here. This house is really grand, likely modeled off of a Western government building or somewhere famous, but only the outside is built. Someone definitely came in here, had some money from drugs or something, and then ran out of money and abandoned it. So it's commonly known that the people here uh, get drugs from over the border with Ukraine. And as you can see on the ground, it's clear that that's quite true. Just needles and things everywhere. There's nothing to see but an empty house and needles that have been used because this is what Josie Hill is famously known for. They build these extravagant outer shells of houses, live in one room, complete it. In this case, they've completed nothing. And then they just abandon it and move on to the next to avoid the taxes. I found an abandoned Soviet apartment complex. Let's go check it out. It's just, you can imagine what was once a big atrium. You guys, look at this place. This is crazy. It's just crumbling. Oh my goodness. What once was such a beautiful building used by so many people and now it's just nothing oh dear hello from the top floor of an abandoned soviet block with ukraine in the distance and gypsy hill in the background and the sunset what a stunning way to end the video catch you guys on the next adventure bye